I've been working on apps for my beginner to intermediate level Angular and Ionic course and came to this scenario. So this app allows people to log in with an existing account and also create a new account. The login form is straightforward enough, but the create account form has some slightly more complex validation requirements. So this form is going to check for valid emails and it's also going to make sure that this password and confirm password fields match. Angular makes supplying validators for specific form fields relatively easy, but the tricky part is communicating the validation state of the form to the user. For example, displaying the correct validation message under the correct field at the correct time. So the behavior I wanted for this form was to not show any validation errors initially. As you can see right now, no error messages are shown, but the form is invalid because there is no email or password values but the user hasn't had a chance to enter any values yet, so we don't really want to throw errors at them straight away. Now, as I start typing in the email field, I also don't want uh, the validation error to display because I need some time to actually write my email address. But if I click away and say go to the next field, having entered some invalid value, then the validation message should display. And the user might also just try to submit the form without entering values for some fields that are invalid, but they haven't been touched. So in this case, we want clicking the submit button to trigger showing all of the validation messages for all of the invalid fields. So what we're going to look at isn't the most robust and complete form validation setup, but as you'll see in a moment, the implementation details are relatively simple. And for situations where you don't have super complex forms, I think this solution works quite nicely. Okay, so let's see how this works. And once again, thanks to Twitter for the code reviews to help refine this solution. So first I'll just give you a sense of the form itself. This isn't really what this video is about, but it does help provide some context. So we're looking at the form for the create account page, which is what we were just looking at. So you can see that each of these fields have some simple default validators that are provided by Angular, like validators.email, validators.required. And then I've also created this custom validator to make sure that the password and confirm password fields match. And again, this is not what this video is about, but here is what that validator function looks like if you are curious. So an important configuration here for the behavior we want is this update on blur configuration. So this defines when the controls in this form are going to be updated. So this means that the controls validation state will only update on blur, which is when the input field for that control loses focus. So we saw that just before, if I bring this up again, as I type in the email field, you can see that the validation state isn't being uh, updated here. But when we blur this field by clicking away, now it gets updated. Okay, so now let's take a look at how to set up the validation messages in the template. This is the part that is actually relevant here. This is the validation message. And more specifically, it's this ng if that is powering all of this logic here. So this is the validation message for the email field. And the idea is that we want to display this message if the field is invalid. And if either of these two values are true, either the field is dirty, which means the user has changed the value or the form has been submitted. So that matches the behavior that I was describing before. We only want to display the validation message when the user changes the value in the field, but they also might just try to submit the form. So even if they haven't changed it, we still want to display that error message if the form has been submitted. Now you might notice that we are checking this form value here. So we can't actually use the form group reference uh, create form in this case to check if the form has been submitted our create form form group doesn't know if this form has been submitted or not. But what we can do is set up this template variable instead on our form and assign ng form to it. And then we can check that form variable instead. So this looks a little strange. So I'm going to give a little bit more technical information here. Technically you don't really need to know this, but I'm going to explain what's actually going on here. So I made this little diagram just to explain what's going on here. So we have this standard form DOM element, and by default, this doesn't have any of Angular's functionality built into it. So what happens is that Angular provides us with something called the form group directive, which you don't really see, but it's exported from the reactive forms module. 
So when you import the reactive forms module, you're going to have this available. Now this has a selector of this form group property, which means that this directive is going to be applied to this form when we use that selector, which is exactly what we are doing when we are supplying the form with a form group. So including this property activates this form group directive, it attaches it to this form DOM element, and that also lets us provide our form group that we created in the example we're looking at, that's that uh, create account form. So that allows us to give that form group to Angular, to this form group directive, and that's going to allow Angular to manage all the logic there. Now, on top of that, this form group directive does other things, and one of those things is it keeps track of when this form has been submitted. So if we can get access to this form group directive, we can check if the form has been submitted or not. And another thing this form group directive does is it exports itself as ng form. So this is the name that it's going to be available as in the template. So that allows us to assign ng form to our template variable here form. And now this form template variable is a reference to this form group directive and we can then check that submitted value. So I do acknowledge all of that was a bit technical, but I didn't really want to just sort of leave this looking like magic, but uh, that's the basic idea. This allows us to check if this form has been submitted and that is important for our display logic here. So now we would just do this same basic thing with all of our fields, just using that same sort of ng if condition and a message but there is a difference for the confirm password field. So the password matches validator that I've created that doesn't apply at the individual control level. That validator isn't being applied to the confirm password field specifically. It's being applied to the form group level as a whole because it makes use of multiple different fields to perform the validation. If we check this again, you can see it's using the password and confirm password fields. So this validation state is a combination of these two fields. So when we're displaying our confirm password uh, validation message, we want to check this form group level validator. So we're still doing the same basic thing. We have that check for if the field is dirty and if the form has been submitted. And instead of checking if the confirm password field is valid, we check the create form itself and we check to see if it has the specific error password match. And if this custom validator here uh, fails to validate the value, that password match value is going to be true. And that's it. I think this is a pretty simple and powerful way to display validation messages in a UX friendly way. Uh, but of course there are plenty of other options out there, including libraries dedicated to helping you manage this. And I certainly wouldn't advocate against using those. I think this approach just works well as a nice default option for me as someone who doesn't need to deal with forms all that much. But if you find yourself having to write a lot of custom form logic and uh, different handlers for displaying uh, certain error messages and so on, it probably will be worth your time looking into some kind of form library to help you manage that. All right, that's it for this video. Uh, if you want to make me feel validated for creating this video, please do consider leaving a like or subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.